Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, there's a certain look to shooting with a camera with a large sensor on it. It's just very, very difficult to replicate that kind of look if what you're doing is shooting on your phone. And I've made a few videos recently about the new iPhone uh, and how wonderful it is for making content and things like that. But as flexible as having three different focal lengths all in one camera, being able to switch between them instantly and having 4K 60 front and back and having ultra wide angle lenses and all that kind of stuff and exciting, it is very thrilling. There is just a limitation in the look you can get out of it. And you can use apps like Filmic Pro or the Moment app to shoot in a flat like image profile. So you can do some more complicated color grading after the fact. You can squeeze out a more cinematic look. Can we stop using the word cinematic, by the way? There are so many videos that I see how to, how to get a cinematic look. And all they're talking about is like slow motion B-roll or color grading, or it's just, that's not cinematic. Cinematic is about telling a story in a very deliberate way. And just a lot of really, you know, halfway decent shot B-roll is not cinematic. That's filler. That's a side rant. I'll come back to that in another video. But aside from all of that, there is just something pleasant about shooting with a camera with a larger sensor on it. I'd normally shoot on a Micro Four Thirds camera, and that's sort of a really nice sweet spot for me for various reasons that are outside the purview of discussing in this video. And then, of course, you've got APS-C and full frame. Of course, full frame being a favorite of many people because you get that ultra shallow depth of field. And there's a certain, again, a certain look to it. Well, this is being shot on an iPhone with that large sensor look to it. Uh, and, and I'm probably, I probably exposed the lead already because I probably titled this video something along those lines. So you've been expecting that reveal all along. So it's not like, shocker. It's just like, oh, how's he doing that? Well, now I'm gonna tell you how I'm doing that. The secret to it all is this, the newly released Lunzi DOF adapter or DOF adapter. DOF is an acronym for depth of field. I'll break that down in a second. But what it actually does is adapt lenses for larger sensor cameras to a smartphone. But it's more than just having one mount on one end of a tube and another mount on the other end of the tube and just hoping for the best. Just doing that will not get you the large sensor look. In fact, it won't work at all with these lenses and how they work. See, there's a little trick inside this thing. What this adapter actually does is project the image from the lens onto a specifically crafted piece of glass inside, a focusing screen, much like the focusing screens used in DSLRs for decades to project a lens's image up to the optical viewfinder. So when you look through the optical viewfinder, you see the image. But in this case, the phone's own camera focuses on this screen. And the trick to it all is, being that the focusing screen is the same size as the sensor in a full frame camera, and because that is where the image is being projected from the lens on the front, the resulting look, what the phone camera actually sees, has the same look, the same field of view, the same optical qualities, the same shallow depth of field, which is, if you haven't figured it out by now, is why these adapters are called depth of field adapters, as a full frame camera. I'd be tempted to call it magical if I didn't know it was just simple optical science. Because step to field adapters are actually nothing new, of course. Uh, if you're a cinematographer nerd, you'll know that back in the very, very earliest days of like when YouTube was just being born and stuff, people were using these, these kinds of adapters on handy cams. Because handy cams, like smartphones, have, you know, usually a, a fixed lens or maybe a zoom lens um, and small sensors and sort of limited capabilities to get a you know, a, a larger sensor kind of look to them. So people would make their own depth of field adapters to put onto the camcorders to then use DSLR lenses on them. Very similar thing here, except bought in the modern age. Now, this simple but effective system isn't perfect by nature of how it must work. The focusing screen has a micro texture to it, which gives a slightly grainy look to the final image. I can make it more obvious if I digitally zoom in with the iPhone camera for you. 
And of course, without any electronic control at all, you're fully manual at all times when it comes to focus and aperture. And you don't get any image stabilization either, both because in any lens where stabilization is built in, it won't work because there's no electronic connections. And your phone's own stabilization system, if it has it at all, is designed only to work with the specific lenses and focal lengths of its own cameras. And using an adapter like this makes that system useless. So the skill floor for using a system like this to film on is much, much higher than just shooting with your iPhone or even shooting with a modern large sensor camera with all their bells and whistles and easy mode conveniences. Fortunately, post-process image stabilization built into many editing suites these days has become really quite good and I've used exactly that on some of the demo shots to remarkable effect. Specifically, if you're curious, it's the one just built into Final Cut Pro X. I've shot all the sample stuff you've been seeing throughout this video with a few different lenses. Some very, very vintage, some from the more modern DSLR days, and also a brand new native E-mount manual lens. I use the Canon EF mount 28mm f1.8, a bit tricky to use considering it has no manual aperture control, but a very clean look, because it is a crispy modern lens. The Yongnuo 50mm f1.8, a very cheap nifty 50, also for the Canon EF mount system, but also without aperture control. So if you're planning on using either of these lenses with this system, a variable neutral density filter might come in handy. The Sony E-mount native light dial 35mm f1.7, which has manual focus and a smooth clickless manual aperture adjustment, great for video, but it is designed for the APS-C Sony cameras. So on this full frame size to focusing screen, it does vignette pretty obviously. But actually, I kind of like that as a look. It gives it a little bit of a retro kick. Then I've got this random old, never heard of it, Formula 5 28mm f2.8 lens. I got this when I bought a particular Pentax old film camera body. It just came attached. And it is, of course, for the old Pentax K-mount film cameras. Also for the Pentax K-mount, a much more recognizable classic little Pentax M SMC 50mm f2. Love this little guy. Wish I had a better quality example of it. <laughs> And finally, a collector's classic and true vintage lens, the Jupiter 11, a 135mm f4 M39 mount lens, also known as the Leica mount, for rangefinder cameras, out of the Soviet era and nearing 60 years old at this point. Now, a few of these lenses are far from perfect examples, carrying some scratches or internal dirt you might have noticed, but all worked really quite nicely on this depth of field adapter. And there's some very pleasant looks to be pulled from using them in combination with this adapter. Other lens systems that you can adapt easily to the Sony E-mount include, of course, the Nikon F-mount, Nikon G-mount, the M42 mount. Unfortunately, there is no way to mount things like Micro Four Thirds lenses, for example, or those cute little C-mount lenses we all love to play with. But the Sony E-mount does lend itself to a very large variety of adapters.
Now, beyond the lens adapter itself, I got to tell you, this camera case, uh, this mounting case they've designed for this thing is literally the best I've ever used. I've used many different frames and cases and clips and all that kind of stuff to put stuff onto an iPhone for when I'm using it for filming, whether it be mites, lights, extra lenses, of course, mounting it to a tripod, all that kind of stuff. I've got everything from the basic little clippy thing all the way up to, you know, huge big cages and things like that. And I've never been perfectly satisfied with any of them. This is damn close to being perfect, in my opinion. This, this case is amazing. It is slim, but it is also festooned with mounting points. I've got a couple of different cold shoes. I've got a couple of different quarter 20 mounts on there. The way the phone comes in and out of it is brilliant. It's all magnetically attached little frame. You just pop the phone in, you, you drop the phone into it, and there's a little magnetic frame that pops over the front of it, and it's been entirely secure. I, I, there hasn't been an instant where I've been worried that the magnet's just going to whoops and fly off and the phone tumbles out or anything. It's been perfectly secure, which kind of amazed me in, in, in and of its own right. Um, and this is the most compact frame of its kind I've ever used as well. Most cases that, you know, come with cold shoe mounts and quarter 20 screw mounts and things like that. So you can put them on tripods and selfie sticks and all that. Most of them are bulky to the point of you just don't want to have it on your phone the entire day. You just put it on the phone when you're actually getting the shot and then you take it off again because the phone becomes so awkward to use with the case on this case. I mean, it is more awkward than most cases because it is a big metal frame. Well, not big, but it is a significant metal frame around the edge, but it doesn't hinder normal use of the phone in any way. So if you want to sort of grab a few shots, do a bit of an edit, then post it up to social media real quick, you can do that all without bothering to take the case off, which is fun because that's just another bother during the day, during the shooting day. And if you're shooting with your iPhone, chances are you want to be ultra mobile, you want to be ultra light, you want to do things as easily, as quickly as possible. You don't want to deal with a bunch of rigging and stuff like that. So just being able to have this case on the entire time it's amazing to me, quite frankly. I'm so impressed with it. I, I can't wait till they uh, release the case for the iPhone uh, 11 Pro Max here, which should be coming by the end of the month. I've been bothering about it rather repeatedly, saying, when's the case coming for this one's case coming for this one's case coming? I want to use it with this. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pr another problem solved beyond just the depth of field adapter. And by the way, it screws in with a 17 mil mount, which is becoming more and more common on these add-on lenses. So th this case will also work with the anamorphic lens that I recently reviewed as well. So I'll be able to use the depth of field adapter and the anamorphic lens on my absolute favorite camera mounted case of all time. Uh, I'm very excited about the whole thing, quite honest with you. Is it coming through? I think it's coming through. I'm starting to get really hyped up and excited. So let's calm down and talk about the depth of field adapter some more. So now you can get a, a, a full frame look 
or at least an APS-C look out of your smartphone camera, why wouldn't you shoot like this all the time? Well, because it's much, much slower, more deliberate. This isn't for running and gunning. This isn't for vlogging. Uh, I will be keeping this in my toolkit for the purposes of getting some nice B-roll from time to time, or if I'm after a very specific look and what I'm planning is shooting entirely with the iPhone. I mean, I mix the iPhone footage and real camera footage all the time. You can set you know both pieces of equipment up so you can match them very, very closely in post so you can't even tell when you're switching cameras and things like that. But if I'm just shooting with the phone either for convenience because carrying this phone and a few lenses with me is much much smaller and lighter than carrying the same lenses or the same equivalent lenses and a proper camera body but there are several limitations to keep in mind and and one of those things is you need to make sure uh, or at least it's very desirable to have a lens with a manual aperture on it. One of the lenses I shot with doesn't, uh, and you know I kind of got around it, but it would have been nice to have a manual aperture just to control that light or depth of field a little bit better on it. But the shot set of the lens looked amazing anyway. Just kind of keep that in mind when you're shooting. The other thing is just the process of using this thing, having a lens, project onto a focusing screen and then filming that focusing screen with another lens, you're losing light. And on the one hand, that's a nice thing because it means you can widen your aperture even further than you would usually be able to on a regular camera, for example, because you're, you're just, it's like almost like having a built-in neutral density filter. On the other hand, the phones don't tend to have the best low light capabilities anyway, so you have to take a little extra care and control uh, how you're shooting. You gotta be nicely lit, or you need to make sure you're you know shooting in the day and outdoors where there's lots of light anyway. This would not be any good for shooting sort of uh, running gun stuff in a sort of darker environment or shooting at night. It's almost useless and things like that. And of course, you are dealing exclusively with manual focus lenses, which does take an amount of skill and practice to be able to do well. But to boil it all, all down, this setup is basically useful for a couple of different things. One is novelty value. If you've got a bit of extra, you know, money burning a hole in your pocket and you love just playing with cameras and playing with smartphone photography and you've got some, uh, you know, manual or vintage lenses sitting around handy, you'd love to be able to snap onto the thing and just go and play. The other thing is for, you know, small filmmakers and things who shoot everything on their iPhone anyway, it gives you a little more flexibility, a little more power because it's actually not too hard to find some good, cheap, uh, you know, adequate to good uh, vintage lenses uh, or brand new uh, manual lenses. There's quite a few around because they're, you know, quite easy and cheap to make. So there's a lot of manufacturers just making new manual focus lenses for things like the Sony system and the Micro Four Third system. And the same goes for your, you know, your average YouTuber, whether you're a travel vlogger or a, you know, food vlogger or an Instagrammer, because, you know, of course, this is perfectly suitable for taking stills as well. I didn't take many still uh, demo shots when I was shooting with these lenses because, you know, I'm more focused on video, of course. And I reckon most of the people looking at this are looking at it for that cinematic like video uh, look for their iPhone stuff, but you can certainly use it very successfully with stills as well. So those Instagrammers are going to be happy with this thing. Just another, another tool in the tool belt. And I say this all the time about sort of certain types of accessories that aren't necessarily for everybody or for all the time. It's just another tool in your toolbox. And the more tools you have, the more creativity you can just go... You think about trying to get a certain shot in a certain way, you go, I know what I can use for that. Or you grab the, this out and you go, what can I use this for today? Let's shoot wildlife or that guy over there doing pull-ups in public for no apparent reason. And creative aspirations aside, this is one of the best built uh, and designed iPhone or smartphone lens accessories and case lens accessory combos that I've ever come across. It is extremely well built, very solid. You can tell it's bespoke built. I had uh, a depth of field adapter many years ago, one of the first ones that was made for a smartphone specifically from B-Script, I think it was. Uh, and that was kind of a slap together bit, you know, out of a parts bin, like nothing was bespoke, nothing was designed. It was just go, we can use that and that and that and that, and we can squeeze them together and we can make a depth of field adapter for an iPhone. And I almost never used it because it just wasn't very good. The focusing screen they were using out of it was very, very grainy. Of course, the phones that were available at the time for using it on were relatively low resolution. It was either standard def video or 720p video or something like that, which sort of exaggerated the, the grain and resolution issues and things like that. And it was very sort of tricky to set up and getting the focusing screen positioned right. And it was just kind of a pain in the ass to use and the result just wasn't worth it with the combination from smartphone to end product. It just wasn't worth using. This has been specifically designed to work with a smartphone from sort of mounting case all the way through to lens mount. It's using the Sony mount, which is a, very, a lot more flexible than your average 
uh, DSLR mount these days because there's a lot of lenses coming out. The Sony cameras are very popular. There's a lot of lenses out there, a lot of adapters for them. Um, only one of the lenses I tested this with was actually a native Sony lens. I think the point I'm trying to make is this has finally evolved to a point from you know, manufacturer standpoint and utility standpoint and usefulness standpoint and combined with the high resolution camera. So you can shoot in 4K 60, scale it down to 1080p. That reduces the grain that you will see on the screen even more. In fact, it winds up, when you do see it, winds up looking very, very similar to film grain, which is also a pretty desirable thing when you're shooting like this. But yeah, I mean, whether I use it as a toy, whether I use it as a sort of inspirational creative muse thing just to play with and sort of get the juices flowing or whether I'm using it seriously to get a very specific you know careful deliberate shot for a, for a decently polished uh, thing that I can stick into a video somewhere I'm pretty excited about this thing but yeah again let me know what you think down in the down below as per usual do the thing with your thumb up and subscribe and ring the bell and all that kind of useless stuff that we pretend matters here on YouTube but fighting against the algorithm is just like I don't know punching the sun in the nuts you just you're just never going to win Really? A bit disillusioned by it all. Thanks for watching. I'm Blunty. We'll catch you next time.